Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review. Today, um, back in the beer room, and uh, we're reviewing Adnam's Southwold Bitter. 4.1%. can't remember ever drinking this. Um, I presume I have over the years, you know. Like most, you drink, and there's a few that, you know, you really, really like. So, we'll see how it goes. I've put enough of it on the shelves over the years. So obviously anything that says bitter, I don't know if you get the same feeling as I do, that if it's a bitter, like a best bitter, that it's, you know, I mean, they say best bitter, but half the time they're not that, you know, they're not that great. So, colour-wise, um, A dark amber there with a white head, good head on it. You know, it looks it looks decent pint. Nice aroma, malt in the aroma. Hmm, not bad tasting actually. So for reviews on it, um on ratebear.com it's got a rating of and it comes up 3.08 out of 5 from 247 ratings. Originally known as Southwold Bitter in 2000, became bitter in early 2006, then became the bitter, and then it returned to Southwold Bitter. Uh, was sold as George Ale for the George Inn in Southwark until 2007. A classic cask bitter, the choice of a growing number of discerning licensees. Fragrant aromas of finest English ops and malt, dry but refreshing with distinctive lingering bitterness. Appetising and delicious, Adnam's Bitter is a category champion. So, you know, can't fault that. I mean, I don't know who wrote the um, description. Here's the first review, 3.1 out of 5. Paul's English Tea, lots of head and lacing. Notes are fruity, some plum and lots of tea. Taste light, medium bitter, light, medium sweet. Huh? Light creamy body, lively carbonation. Didn't understand that middle bit. Another review, 2.8 out of 5. A nice light beer to drink on your way round the pubs. Goes down the hatch like an old fashioned pale ale. It's a clean, pure beer with an almost a wine like mouthfeel. Perhaps over-filtered, not soggy with malts or sour with hops though. I could have, I could have done with slightly more taste of both. Okay. And the last review, a hazy golden amber colour with a small white head, aroma of a grain, malt and citrus, light to medium body and soft carbonation, taste of biscuit malt, citrus and hops, light bitterness, smooth, pretty good. So yeah, its brother, Broadside, is a beer that I'd obviously seen in my time at, at Sainsbury's, uh, those five years. Never really bothered about it. Um, got told by a bloke at work who we refer to as BFJ, um, for reasons I'm not going to say on there, in case some twat goes and tells him. Um, yeah, um, big friendly John. Just in case. Um, yeah. I've totally gone and thrown the curveball now. Yeah, anyway, Broadside. He told me about Broadside before Christmas. And he says, oh, it's lovely. And I, could, um, I met, obviously, I remember it as something I put on the shelves, but not as a beer I tried. So I tried some before Christmas. Absolute woof. Top 10 beer, straight away. Tried some again a week or two ago for another review just to get the feel of it, and yeah, definitely a top 10 classic. Uh, hopefully soon, when I get some uh, pennies rolling in, I'm gonna treat myself to a load of beers from Ocado, because they've got beers there that I can't get at the other supermarkets. And if you can get that 30% off, which I'll use a different email for doing it. Uh, and you can use PayPal as well, pay through PayPal, so it's even, you know, it's a very classy little deal. But if you can use that, as long as you don't put wine in the deal, because wine breaks the deal, it has to be just beers. Uh, I think it's like minimum pricing rubbish that came in years ago. 
So I, I probably get 130 quid's worth for 100 quid, which absolute bargain, especially if they're on offer as well. And I've seen some brands on there that I've never heard of before. And that's what it's all about. It's nice doing reviews, trying to get different beers. But sometimes you have to bite the bullet and try and buy them. Amazon is not that cheap for beers. If you're going to buy beers, uh, use your supermarkets. Use the likes of Retro's Ocado. You know, Amazon's not that cheap. You're paying £3 per bloody can. So, my son was going to buy me a load for Christmas. He was going to pay 70 quid on me. He's a good lad. And uh, it would have worked out 24 bottles or cans for 70 quid, which is steep. The way I did it, I got, for that money, I got 47. <laughs> Win-win situation. So, back to this fella. Yeah, so it's a it's a nice multi little bit of floral in the background, um, nice pleasant you know beer really. I can see why pubs are slapping it on the counter. Um, if you go into a pub nowadays, and I don't know if it's the same all around the country, but in Nottingham, most of the pubs are flooded by the Heineken brands, i.e. John Smith's, Foster's, Strongbow, and then you've also got Guinness, Carling, Stella. It's them brands. Put some... No wonder pubs are going out of business. Get rid of that crap and put some craft beers, or at least beers that are, are classy, you know. And have guest ales. It's not a rocket science, you know. You know, all of us that drink real ales, we want to be trying something new. We want a good range of top quality beers, but then we want the newbies to try. You know, two or three, four newbies. You go into a pub, say you was only going to have one part in that pub, and you end up having five. You know, for the pub, it's good business. Brings people in, and then rotating them as well. You know, having, um, speaking to local breweries, you, people don't mind paying three or four quid a pint as long as it's something fresh, something new. Rotation, you know. Um, I tried to do this with supermarkets. I, you know, my bosses, I says, what you need is, it's not having these pound shop, pound shop beers, pound beers, that's, but it's always bloody Spitfire or it's pedigree. Put something different on, you know. Yes, you're going to come across one that ain't going to sell that great, but the majority, if they're equipped, people will buy them, you know. Money talks. So, nice taste. I've got a bit of soap in the taste, to be fair. That's not to say it's nasty, it's just a, a hint of something I've got. There is tea. You can taste that bit of tea. Not as, not as prevalent as it is with this sort of stuff, where it just, it's full of malt and tastes like tea. And uh, sorry, St. Peter's. But, uh, I know I won the competition, but you know, if it don't taste right, it don't taste right. Um, so a great standard bitter, no top ten material. No, not even by a long shot. But not everybody needs to be top ten material. We all, you know, we all know that. Sometimes you just want to go in a pub. This against John Smith would batter John Smith's any day of the week, you know, as a standard beer in a pub. And that's why licensees can go for it. Because not everybody wants, even though they're quality beers, something like Broadside, something like King Goblin, not everybody wants that because they're 6.6, 6 percenters. A lot of people won't, can't, can't or don't want to drink that high, you know, alcohol content. Whereas people like me obviously do. <laughs> so yeah, good looking beer, pleasant aroma, there was an aroma, uh, good taste, you know, all the way down. Couldn't see carbonation of lacing to be fair, eh? and I think I talked that much, I didn't, I didn't uh, really look properly. Uh, yeah, a nice beer, good addition, 
a good a good best bitter. That's what you can say. So out of five, four point one out of five. Yeah, a nice simple beer. Doesn't need to be over overly thing in any area, but just a good tasting beer. Well impressed with that. Thanks for watching. See you soon.